Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news elements from around the world. Our headlines, former officer Derek Chauvin convicted for the murder of George Floyd in the US. Syrian refugees face uncertainty as Denmark revokes residency permits. Volcanic eruptions in St. Vincent expected to displace 20,000 people. And teacher strikes takes place in Haiti. In our first story, we go to the US where former officer Derek Chauvin has been convicted for the murder of George Floyd. The verdict was announced by the Hennepin County District Judge on April 20th. Chauvin is found guilty of all three charges by a 12-member jury in the city of Minneapolis. His bail has been revoked and he has been remanded to custody. His sentencing is expected to take place in two months. A total of 45 witnesses testified in Chauvin's trial which began on March 29th and which extended over three weeks. Expert witnesses called by the prosecution testified that Floyd had died due to a lack of oxygen caused by the type of restraint used by Chauvin. Three other former police officers who were also present at the scene have been charged with aiding and abetting murder. They will face a separate trial schedule for August 23rd. Chauvin's conviction has been celebrated widely as a first and necessary step in securing justice and for setting a precedent that the police cannot enjoy impunity for committing violence against marginalized communities. The conviction is largely attributed to the mass mobilizations against racism and police brutality that took place over the last year in towns and cities across the US and according to official polls, saw anywhere between 15 and 26 million participate. In our next story, Denmark has been in the process of revoking of residency permits of hundreds of Syrian refugees. This decision is based on a country of origin report by the Immigration Service claiming that parts of Syria are now safe for return. As reported by The Guardian, at least 189 applications for the renewal of temporary residency status have been denied since last year. According to Refugees Welcome, around 35,000 Syrians have arrived in Denmark since 2011. Of these, 4,500 people have been granted asylum due to general risk or 7.3 status. This is often given to vulnerable groups including women, unaccompanied children and the elderly. Refugees Welcome stated last month that the withdrawals and denied extensions were limited to people from Damascus and the Rif Dimashq area. This means that the residence permits of around 1,200 people with 7.3 status will be reassessed. According to reports, 94 Syrian refugees were informed last month that their residency permits would not be renewed. Given that Denmark does not have diplomatic relations with Syria, it cannot forcibly deport refugees back to the country. This means that people who do not leave Denmark voluntarily will be detained in deportation centres. The UN High Commission for Refugees had also issued new guidelines for host countries last month. It stated that refugees should not be forcibly returned to Syria regardless of whether areas under government control or are under state or non-state entities. A joint statement released by activists on Tuesday also argued that the return must be voluntary, safe and dignified. It argued that the quote, drivers of displacement remained in Syria and the deteriorating socio-economic and humanitarian conditions continue to pose a risk. And in our final story, we go to San Vincent and Grenadines in the Caribbean, which has witnessed multiple explosions from the last two free air volcanoes since April 9th. Scientists have warned that the explosions could continue for another six months. The eruptions have covered entire villages in ash and destroyed livestock and crops including banana plantations. Water resources have also been contaminated with a 50% depletion in storage reported last week. Widespread electricity shortages have been reported and schools and businesses have been shut down. In light of the crisis, the UN launched a $29 million global funding appeal on April 20th. The appeal will focus on humanitarian assistance and recovery and rehabilitation. This includes support for agriculture, health and repairing of homes. According to the UN OCHA, the eruptions are expected to displace around 20,000 people. The National Emergency Management Organization reported on April 19th that 12,735 people had been registered in public shelters and private homes. The UN has stated that the major focus of assistance efforts will be to prevent the spread of COVID-19. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is recovering from high surge of COVID-19 cases in the pandemic and a severe dengue outbreak. And finally, in our video section, we take a look at the teacher strike in Haiti.
that's all your time for today. Be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Thank you.